Ladies and gentlemen, this middleweight contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds and is brought to you by Old Town Kitchen and Cocktails, the official site for the BYB 14 after party at the conclusion of our card. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Wayne Spinola. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 154 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated bare knuckle record of two victories and no defeats. And he fights out of clear water, Florida. He is known as the Pitbull. Here is Henry Williams. And his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner. He stands six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 155 and one half pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of O and O, making his debut. He fights out of Fullerton, California. Here is Manuel the Rascal de la Torre. All right, guys, you know the rules. Obey my commands at all times, protect yourselves at all times. If you want to now, shake hands. Stay right here, I'll get you started in a second. Two minutes, 21 seconds for a 2-0 record. The Rascal, his opponent, making his bare-knuckle debut. Wayne Spinola, our referee. Here we go! Blue wraps for Williams, red wraps for the Rascal. Manuel De La Torre, black trunks for the Rascal, the Pitbull, and the black and silver. Oh, De La Torre with a sharp right hand there, guys. Big, big hook, return fire from Williams. Big time. Hey, both guys, you know, both guys look like they're attempting to do some boxing with the jab, but then they start sort of winging right from there. I mean, see Williams looking to continue to uh, cr create these counter opportunities with the left hook. I like the bending on Williams. That left connected. Yeah, De La Torre has been using that stiff jab pretty well. It's just he doesn't really have a follow-up after. More importantly, he's, he doesn't really have a know-how of getting out of the way if he misses it he, just, he does commit very hard to it so it gives Williams a chance to kind of dip over to his left and try to counter with the hook as he just tried right there doing a good job utilizing the reach advantage that he has in this fight against Henry Williams and he's just a little upright too upright for my own my comfort my comfort tell you what he's got using those nice straight shots he's controlling the range so far and Williams is having trouble getting inside I tell you Williams they say you jab with a jabber you don't hook with a hook a nice that was sort of a double connect there. Both guys yeah. did right hands, right? Oh, nice yeah, combination nice. put together. But he did not connect one shot. Right, right. And you can see pure boxing there from De La Torre because he had a chance to get in the Muay Thai, get, get out Williams in the Muay Thai clinch or something. He didn't even attempt it. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. See, what happens when you commit to that jab, which is, oh, Williams he's is hurt. hurt. Williams is hurt. He's got no legs. Stumbled. Manuel De La Torre looking to finish it here in the first. There's a cut on the left eye of Williams. We're at 2.15. So we are about to get to the point of the entirety of Williams' career in bare knuckle coming into this fight. We just reached it. <laughs> and he's in trouble. Yeah, but he recovered. Yes. Final 30 of round one. Amazing. Ooh, nice and done. Body and down goes William. Double left hook. Yes. He's not there. He's not there. He's not there. I don't know if the rest of the going to continue, guys. I don't, know if he's, I don't know if he's good. Look at the eyes are glassy. I don't know if he's good. I don't know if that was too smart, man. Oh. We will make it Saved by the to round bell. two. And he's still stumbling back to this corner. Let's see. Let's see if they're able to revive him in some kind of effective way. Let's 
see the replay from last round. Big round for De La Torre. Let's see, there's that stumbles there with stumbles Williams there with a double left hook. If you look at it, he kind of throws it from his awkward angle, but he likes to double up on that left hook. We see a nice sharp one too. That sort of that was one of the good shots. There was one right hand in the round where he starts to really wobble uh, Williams across the trigon. And here he had him trapped up against the ropes. L little combination there or flurry of shots. You saw some some jabs attempted by Williams when he uses them, they're good, but here he gets hit with a double, triple counter left hook after missing his own hook. But that was the problem. Williams, he could not close the gap because of the jab. It's such a long reach on Manuel de la Torre that there was no way that he could actually get under that guard. Yeah, and he was been trying to close the gap with leaping hooks instead of jabs. Maybe I would say he should probably start, try to start fainting a little bit more and try to get a get, uh, the, oh, nice oh! right hand. Just like that! Wow! We got ourselves a fight! Talk about a comeback! You are not kidding! Saved by the bell, and he comes in the first second of the second round to just connect very efficiently. Remember, coming in, he had won his first two fights in 221 total. And on left hook! Guess that's why he can carry the moniker the Pitbull, Pauly. That's a way to start. That's a way to turn things around for a guy who was almost out. You got that right. I mean, in my opinion, I thought they could have stopped the, the fight last Me round. Me too. Instead, now Williams is right back in this fight, scoring a sweet knockdown to start this round. But now he's taking advantage of, of the type lump, just going for that dirty fighting. This is a great fight. After what was a dominant first round by the Rasco, the Pitbulls bringing it here in round number two. But see the difference? Now it's Williams who's really staying right on top of De La Torre. Yeah, he's got to be careful though. De La Torre shows flinging those right hands. Good dirty boxing. Williams hurt again. And he answers with a left poly. Wow. This is, this is, this is slug him out type of fighting. You got that right. Both men wobbled. Oh, but still walking. I tell you, sometimes, man, when they shoot like that, I, don't, I, I think it's just a matter of hitting the lottery. Because both guys aren't paying attention to any defense in those, uh, those exchanges. Nice right hand made by De La Torre. Some blood down the right side, the right cheek of Manuel De La Torre. Oh. I heard that. I felt that. I did too. And it hurt. <laughs> oh. oh, big hook there now by De La Torre. He's starting to try to get the advantage back in this fight. De La Torre's really biting down on the mouthpiece, looking for the one-punch knockout. I like how he finishes another cut. combinations. Yeah, another cut on Williams. Williams right between like the eyes. In between the, yeah, in between the eyebrows. 30 seconds. Now on the clock here in round two. Big cut. Big flurry up against the ropes. And I think, you know, referee should start taking a look at Williams again. Oh, big oh, overhand oh, right. Oof. I'll tell you, man, De La Torre landed a little uppercut, but man, that Williams overhand right also was, oh. Hey, what thing Williams has to start watching is the right hand. I mean, they, whenever he comes to directly right in the front door of De La Torre, De La Torre just beats him with straight right hands every time. Again, you got to be more subtle, maybe using some feints and stuff like that in order to try to close the gap. Obviously a jab as well. Yeah, oh, big, Boom. Big, that was a, That was right how they started the round, guys. I mean, the For round seconds. starts. And seconds into the round, Williams has completely reversed his fortunes from round one. There's a shot from right hand from De La Torre. De La Torre starts end up, ends up working his way back into this round. There's a hard right hand that he meets Williams with. And there was a few times when Williams just tried to walk straight in the front door like that. And De La Torre just, just met him with a right hand and he went and walked into it. So again, Williams has to be a little bit more deceptive in how he tries to enter the punch zone. Round three. Uh, I have this doubt that Williams can actually hold on. His legs are a little wobbly. Um, 
that corner was making emphasis on him just staying in the fight, close the gap, and stay on top of Bellatore. How efficient can he be on that? Yeah, exactly. Huh? These guys got all fight for here in, in the third round. I would say there's an experience advantage for Williams, and there is, because he's fought bare knuckle before, but not this deep. Now we're not just testing ability, now stamina, grit, ability. Oh. We already know he's got it. He came back after the first round. Absolutely. So again, on, on the entrance, you got to be a little bit less predictable as Williams. Walked into a couple of uppercuts there until Torres set him up. Big swing and a miss by Henry Williams. Again, he's got to use feints. I mean, he, feint, he does move the head move, head move once in a while, but then he stops, especially at this point, he's fatigued, he's tired, so the head movement is not going to be as sharp. And he dips his head a, a lot too, Paulie, and man, he's seen that and taken advantage of it, and he's landed some uppercuts, Claudia. Yeah, that's exactly how he connects that uh, uppercut. De La Torre sees that, and like a good bo boxer, he's got uh, Williams' timing down. Keep an eye on the gas tank of Henry Williams, and it's not due to lack of training. It's due to the punishment oh. that's been delivered to him by the rascal. See that half step De La Torre does just to stay out of range from Williams? It's just half step. And De La Torre is fighting a smart round three right now because he's putting gas back in his tank after coming out with big fire in round number one and even more in round two. De La Torre's got a very systematic and disciplined attack here in the third. So he's he's refueling, but he's not stalling. He's he's here to fight, he's here to finish, and that body shot hurt his opponent. Oh, yeah. But once again, he's coming with his head. He's leading with his head, opening the opportunity for that uppercut on De La Torre. See? Oh, nice counter help there again. Yeah, one thing, he, I don't know if by accident at this point, but he timed that jab of De La Torre and he came back with his with a hook. He's landed a couple of hooks like that in this fight, but the problem is he's not been deceptive in any other manner. And... Oh! This is starting to get like a rocky movie, guys. Yes. I mean, Williams is stumbling. He's stumbling trying to finish the fight, trying to trying to finish his man. It's crazy. He's just fighting on instinct at this point. He's been, I feel like he's been stumbling for a few rounds. What a fight. Del Toro has his legs back now. Back up, back up. Ten seconds left. Yeah, he did. The recovery on both fighters is amazing. I don't even know if they fully recovered. I mean, maybe they were just as, just as much hurt as the other. That way they couldn't go as, for the shot of a finish. See Williams stumbling back to the corner. Wow. Look at round four. So round one to De La Torre. Round three to Williams. Wow. Anytime you start to count Williams out, he starts to fight his way back in. And let's check it out here. You start to feel like Williams is, is shorting up, and then boom. Yeah, just as he's starting, he's starting to fall away. Oh, he tries to counter with, oh, here's a hook and then a right hand. Wow. He tries to counter with the body shot. He gets De La Torre going straight back, something you should never do in going away from punches. You see De La Torre go straight back as uh, he's trying to avoid the left hook of Williams to the body and then going straight back. Williams caught that and says, you know what? He comes an overhand right behind my hook. Manny Murrow in the corner. Mentioned him earlier. Iowa Tribe in Oklahoma trained at Jackson Wink. Manny's one of the good guys in mixed martial arts. You thought he was out in the first, maybe stumbled in the second after the quick hit, and then it's actually Williams who knocks his opponent down in round number three. This is round number four. Red wraps for Manuel De La Torre, Black Trunks, Henry Williams, already 2-0 and in bare knuckle, making his BYB debut tonight, Black and Silver Trunks in the blue wraps. In my non-official cards right now, I have the fight type. Non-official cards. Yep, yep. 
I'm sorry, I, I don't think there's a wrong answer to who's winning this fight. <laughs> could be even, could be slightly ahead one or the other. By, by a hair, by yeah, a hair. That's what I'm saying, indeed. Anything is possible. Especially that second round, that was a very tough round to score. Mm -hmm. What seemed most impossible is that one man would still be in this fight. Exactly. And they both are. Third bare knuckle battle of 2022 for Williams. Deepest he has gone by far in a fight as we are in round number four, the debut for his opponent. He said, I get nervous, but I've been doing this my entire life. And I don't know what Sam Liera and everybody's working with with Manuel De La Torre, but when he's not doing silly stuff, as, as Sam said, he's doing it right because he looks outstanding as well. Oh, now oh, Williams oh, connects oh. again. All of a sudden, De La Torre looks completely out of rhythm. Somewhat of a chaotic, chaotic structure now. Just over a minute on the clock here in round four. Stop, 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 stop. Remember that nice, solid stance where I mentioned that he was just a little too erect for that position? Yep. That's gone for Manuel de la Torre. Yes. Watch. Stance is totally open. Yes. Very wide there. Williams has to be careful going straight back. Nonetheless, these guys do, do make a bunch of defensive mistakes, but it has made the fight fun to watch. Well, no doubt what is fight of the night, at least thus far. Uh, yeah. And Williams, on the other hand, is still very focused, watching his opponent, pouncing, just waiting for that switch opportunity. Yep. And the knockdown he scored in the third was a beautiful one, too. 15. We are going to head to the fifth and final round. tonight in the top 10 in the WBO junior heavyweight rankings. Paul Claudia, our good buddy Brandon Glanton, just put on a show with David Light on Pro Box TV. I would say bulletproof is what both these men are proving to be in this fight here right no, now. Well, they're trying to be. I don't know. It's hard to live up to Grant Brandon. Uh, you know, in a fight that I, I thought he won last week. Yes. David Light. Tough call. Tough, tough call. call. Had a score to, score to knock down in the last round, which I thought it sealed it. Let's see how bulletproof these two guys are right now. <laughs> so far, they're, pre they're pretty bulletproof. We're in the final round. Who would have thunk after that first round that we would be at this instance in this fight? Without a doubt, Claudia. You know, I, I, at this point, you know, I don't know who's got to do a, a little bit more at this point. I, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't say anybody's in the room. Nice exchange there. And I'll tell you what, I'll put it to you like this. Their defense is starting to slip more and more, and it wasn't that good to begin with. If anybody's going <laughs> to pull it out here, if it was all the fight for here in round five, you know what, it's anybody's fight for me. What an outstanding display of skill, style, heart, grit, and toughness by both of these men. The jab lands. Ninety seconds remain in the fight. Stop, 
Quickly back up. Back up. Fight. Well, we thought Glenton and Light was tough for the judges. This one's not going to be easy either. Yeah, exactly. And just when you think one guy starts to take advantage and take, gain the advantage, the other guy fights his way back and swings it back around. And you think of maybe a knockdown or two gives one guy an advantage, and the other guy, guy scores a knockdown or two. You got That's that right. the kind of fight we've seen. The, the big change was that first right hand immediately at the start of round number two that Williams landed when we thought he might not even make it out of round number one. Yeah, I mean, at the end of that round, I was questioning whether he should continue. And yeah. And, that, and here we are in the fifth round, and I just want to point out, again, the leg work. The footwork on, on Williams is a lot sharper. He's still on his toes. De La Torre is not the same fighter we saw in the first couple of rounds. Now, nice. and again, the fatigue doesn't help him, and, he's, and he keeps going straight back like that. It's already gotten him knocked down a couple times in this fight for going straight back with his head up in the air like that. And he gets clipped with a couple of shots there, trying to go straight back. And now Williams walks right into a few uppercuts, because again, Williams is not deceptive enough on his entrance. He just, he's always trying to rush into the front door, and he's walking through a lot of De La Torre's offense tonight because of that. They go the distance! What a fight! De La Torre and Williams. Hands, my hat goes off to both fighters. Talk about just having, you know, those things that we buy at the supermarket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, outstanding. You know, the ones that I, are I led know. by the chicken. Yeah, I know, I know. Thank you, though. Just making sure. Thank you. Now everybody else knows too. Thank you. <laughs> uh, man, those little hooks, Polly, were great by Manny. Oof. Oh, look at those uppercuts. And, and it wasn't even really De La Torre setting them up. It was more Williams walking into them. And that, that was a big problem for Williams. Now, obviously, both of these guys, like I said, had defensive liabilities. But one of the biggest problems Williams was having is trying to close the gap without walking into anything. And that's because he wasn't deceptive enough. Both scored knockdowns. Huge respect to both of these men. Chapeau, chapeau, chapeau. Outstanding performance in this young man. Manuel De La Torre making his de debut. He said he was looking to finish this fight before the final bell. Well, it did not happen. Judges are rendering a very tough decision. Twenty-six-year-old Manuel De La Torre, twenty-eight-year-old Henry Williams. Scorecards are in. Here is Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of five full bare-knuckle rounds. We go to the judges' scorecard for the official decision. All three judges see the bout 47 to 46. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Manuel the Rascal De La Torre. 47, 46, 47, 46, 47, 46. It was that kind of fight. Man. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, where are we at here? We're, we need a camera over here. 